When you are in the state that I'm talking about, what from the former point of view would have appeared to be nothing more than ordinary everyday life is suddenly seen to be a magical process. Absolutely weird. So that you can see that you might be just rubbing around in some ash. It becomes perfectly obvious that that's the whole point of the universe. Incredible. I mean, it's all there. Infinity in the grain of sand and everything. That's it. And you look at other people rushing around and people going about their business every day, serious. I'm going to get there, I'm going to make this thing. And they're quite mad. You feel sorry for them. You don't feel angry at them. But they're quite mad. They don't realize that now is it. That's where it's all going, as well as where it all comes from. The Alpha and the Omega is now. The whole surround of us is completely magical. Now, of course, we become aware that imaginative people are conscious of this. Imaginative people show their consciousness of it by the way they act, by their taste in whatever they surround themselves with. You begin to notice that there are some certain people with whom you either have great accord or great fear because they're not ordinary, because they have an atmosphere of magic. They have imagination and they're not hiding under an attempt to conform to the ideal of being ordinary. And the artistic people are here. There are also people you can call relaxed people. Relaxed society is a very wonderful class of people. They're not on edge. You know, there are some people who are edgy all the time and you feel that your very presence around their place is a mess. <laughs> but relaxed people have what in Arabic is called baraka. It means divine grace, but it also means the quality of an old frying pan that has had long years of use and is just perfect. That's baraka. And there are people like that too, you see. And all these are the great spontaneous virtues that cannot be contrived because this thing can only come in the process of growth. So you say, well, do I have to wait? But the whole thing is in the waiting. I don't mean the virtue of patience. I mean waiting when there is nothing to do but wait. And when you see there is nothing to do but wait, then it happens. But it won't be hurried. Because the minute you're trying to hurry it, that introduces the one thing that stops it. The miracle, the magic thing is happening all the time. But you can't see it when you're trying to get it. And you can still less see it when you're trying to get it fast. So there is no alternative but to go through the point of you can't get it at all. You are going to be you. The same slob you've always been. <laughs> see, you can't change it. And all your good resolutions are just bombast then you start to be real. So just as the, in traveling or in ordinary relations with your friends every day, these gorgeous things happen of themselves. Those are the true pleasures. 
so at the level of mystical experience, the most astounding insights, you know, where you can go into the deep, most trivial everyday affairs as containing the entire secret of the universe. Any point becomes the takeoff point. Because there's a principle in operation which the Japanese call Jiji Muge. Everything event implies all the others. And here, in this way, you begin to see that that is actually so. Because you see, there are no separate things. It's all a single unified process, no longer divided into the voluntary and the involuntary, the I and the you, or the I and the it, because it is the big happening, which is neither voluntary nor involuntary, which is neither free nor determined. All these are mere ideas about it and about. You've abandoned all that. You've abandoned philosophy totally, because you see it's just a net designed for catching water. <laughs> and when all that's gone and that whole attempt to clutch life, to capture the pleasure, has disintegrated, there it is. And you needn't feel anxious about, will it stay? It's a gorgeous thing to feel you no longer got to worry whether it will stick around. Because you know that if you do worry, you'll shoo it away. So uh, it, it's a tremendous relief, you see, not to have to bother with, will it stick around? Will I lose my insight? Will my Satori take wing and go off with the bats? Uh, you just forget it. Because the more you let go of it, the more it stays. And you don't even have to worry about, will you be sure to let go of it? Because that too is a hang-up. And you can begin, you see, from your very weakness. That's your strength. It's not your big ego and your big will that is the strong thing here. It's your slobbiness, it's your weakness, it's your foolish side that is your strong suit here. See? Yokodaishi puts it in this way. You cannot take hold of it. You cannot get rid of it. In not being able to get it, you get it. When you are silent, it speaks. When you speak, it is silent. The great gate is wide open and nobody obstructing it.